What's up guys? This is going to be the most simplified and comprehensive breakdown of our three different muscle contraction types, eccentric, isometric, and concentric. We're gonna give you guys some examples to make sure it makes sense as well. Let's jump right in. So our three different types of muscle contraction are eccentric, isometric, and concentric. And if you're with us and you're studying for the exam, boom, boom, ding, ding, you should think about remembering those because they're gonna come up. But they play a huge role in the gym. Every lift, every movement, activity of daily life that we do, it has some combination of these three different types of muscle contraction. And we're gonna start out by talking about eccentric muscle contractions, all right? Most people, when we jump into the gym and we're doing exercises, we start banging out squats, push-ups. Most times, we think about the push up, right? When we're exerting that force. That's only one of our three. That's our concentric, we'll get to that. But eccentric, because most of our exercises, especially as we start teaching clients, most of them are gonna end up starting with an eccentric contraction. And that's a great thing. Eccentric contractions, we are strongest in, all right? Now you might think about this. Maybe you've trained for pull-ups at some point in time, and you found that you could do an eccentric pull-up, right? You could hold yourself at the top and slowly control yourself down, but you couldn't pull yourself up, right? Why are you stronger in that muscle contraction? Well, without getting too nerdy, we end up having more cross bridges and crossover inside of the actual muscle fibers. So long story short, we can handle more load in eccentric contractions. Now, the great thing about starting, let's say we're talking about a bodyweight squat, or even we're talking about a loaded squat. I got my kettlebell here. When I'm in that top position, First off, just to hold my body in position right here, I've got some level of muscle contraction. If not, you know, I would just jelly down to the ground. So we have some element of muscle tone, all right? Especially as I'm standing here, that's gonna be a version of our isometric contraction. Eccentric, when we're doing body weight exercises or exercises that are what we call closed chain, our feet or our hands are in contact with the ground, it's oftentimes easy to think about that descent, that control down towards the ground as the eccentric contraction. But it's more than that, all right? It is when our muscles are lengthening, okay? So take notes if you need to right now. Muscles are lengthening. So I'll give you guys another example because again, it starts to get confusing when we're thinking about one exercise versus the other. When we're at the top position in our squat, as we lower our body down, think about what muscles are lengthening. Primary muscles, we've got our quadriceps, those four muscles, we've got our glutes, we've got our hamstrings. And as we go through that range of motion, especially from the top, right, we've got lengthening of the quadriceps as we go into that knee flexion. We also have lengthening of the glutes as we come into that hip flexion as well, all right? So that's the muscle lengthening. Now it's a little bit more challenging when we think about an exercise, let's say like a bicep curl, all right? And if you're weird like me, maybe you stand up and you do this with me while you're at home. When we're at the top of that bicep curl, all right, we've got this nice contraction. We go slow, controlled lower down. That's our eccentric contraction, that biceps brachii, that muscle is actually lengthening to slowly fight that resistance, all right? So in that point in time, that resistance, whatever weight we might be holding, is creating more force than we're generating the biceps, so we're slowly lowering down. So again, same thing, if I was trying to max, you know, lift as much as possible, I'd be able to slowly control down more than I'd be able to bring up, again, because we have those crossovers already. So especially if you guys are in the process of studying the NASM model and you guys are understanding stabilization, a lot of it has to do with emphasizing these eccentric contractions for a couple reasons. First thing, if we slow movements down, we've got a little bit more time to make those corrections and there's a little bit of a motor learning process, all right? But that slow control down allows us to control the other types and the other parts of the movement as well. So either way, eccentric contractions are really important. Not only are they important when we're doing things like squats and a stabilization type phase where we're looking at four seconds down, nice and controlled before we move on with the exercise, but also even as we get into other phases. Many of you guys, maybe you've done some version of bodybuilding and you've done negatives where you're purposefully with a heavy weight trying to control down as much as possible, maybe even using some momentum and then controlling back down again it's actually where we get most of our muscle soreness. So I know if you're watching this video, that means you're probably a little crazy and you like to be sore, right? First off, not everyone does, but you probably do. That's where we get most of our muscle soreness, right? If I'm controlling down in that squat, we have some slight 
pulling, and you can even actually think of it as microfiber tears that happen in the muscle, and that happens more during those eccentric contractions. So again, starting to put some of these things together, eccentric contractions are an important part of our contraction cycle, but we also really want to think about that with new exercisers, right? Someone first comes into the gym the first week, well, if we're doing stabilization type tempo, which is pretty slow, you know, three to four seconds down, it's not going to take a lot of weight, you know, because you think about that, you're doing that for, you know, 10 to 15 reps, you do three or four sets, and all of a sudden, you know, you're, you're that person trying to get up off the toilet the next day. Uh, most people don't necessarily love that. And if we're just thinking long-term programming for someone, we don't want to throw too much in too early. So you really want to think about those eccentric contractions, not only earlier on, slowing them down for people, but knowing that's where a lot of that DOMS, that delayed onset muscle soreness is going to happen. So we want to think about the loads that we're using and even the exercises that we're putting people into early on. Now the same muscles that are working eccentrically, they're also going to work isometrically and they're also going to work concentrically. So your isometric contraction, this is one, this is like the lost contraction. This is the one I don't think most people think that much about in the gym. And I'm going to give you guys one exercise you're probably pretty familiar with. And if you want, you can follow me down to the ground here. Is thinking about a push up or plank, All right? This is, I'm gonna imagine at this point in time, if you have found yourself with me watching this video, you have done some version of a plank. And that is an isometric contraction. We have contraction happening in the actual muscle fibers, but we don't have a change in the length at the joint, right? So if I'm in a push-up position, it just means all the muscles, especially on the anterior, this front side of my body, they're contracting in order to prevent motion at those joints. That's an isometric contraction, right? So when we think about core exercises like planks and side planks and other stuff, it might make sense. You're like, okay, Joe, I get that. But even in the context of the exercise that we've already talked about, especially early on, there's a huge benefit from emphasizing isometrics, all right? First off, helping people prevent injury, building more stability in joints. I mean, the list really goes on, but let's talk about it with an example. One that Again, if you're brave and you want to do with me during the video, we find that isometrics can actually be really challenging. So if we want to go back, we've already covered a little bit about eccentrics. If I'm in the top position of a static lunge and I go to slowly lower myself down, right? Let's say we're doing this stabilization NASM you know, prescribed tempo. That lowering down phase, I've got eccentric contraction happening in my quadriceps, right? On both sides. Also a little bit in my glutes and my hamstrings as those lengthen. Now, if I hold at the bottom here, let's say right now I'm holding in somewhat of a bottom position, I'm obviously not falling to the ground. So there's muscle contraction happening. This is isometric contraction. Now this is important because especially if you guys are studying with us or you guys are familiar with the NASM model or you just wanna build a stronger foundation for yourselves, spending a period of time, three, four, five weeks, emphasizing these end range of motion isometrics, it can be a really great way to do a couple things. First off, to build some more integrity in those joints, right? So if I switch legs and you guys can see, as I get down here, having to hold that position, with isometrics, we only get stronger in the position we train in, right? So if over time, if I'm gonna wanna load someone up, or maybe you wanna get larger legs or stronger, and you're gonna get down into this position, well, by hitting some isometrics here, I build more stability in throughout that joint, especially as the hips connect and attach to the pelvis. Translation for that means that down the road when I go to work with more weight, more volume, more speed, power, I'm gonna have more stability and strength built up there that's going to A, transfer to more performance in my training session and also hopefully less likely to get injured in the process, which if you're like myself, you've been training long enough, you've probably gotten hurt in the gym or in competition or something else. So this is a great way to make sure we're setting a really strong foundation. And the other thing I'll go back to is from a motor learning process for new clients, it's also a really great way to make sure I've got time to coach them, right? You get down to a position, right? You can make any corrections where they're at. You can also help figure out where's that end range of motion. And it literally just gives you more time to figure out the exercise, to learn it, and make sure we're in better positions, all right? So those isometric contractions are huge. It again might be something you've used before, you know, when it comes to strength training, power lifting, sometimes we use it as a sticking point. Right, if you're training for the bench press, you might have a point in time where you're kind of failing right at the bottom. So you may work some isometric holds to get stronger in that position. So there's some performance benefits from it as well, but it is an important type of contraction and most people don't train it. I mean, again, walk into the gym tomorrow, 
look around, tell me how many people are doing any type of pause exercises. Now, most times we're banging them out. And once you've built up the stability, that's okay. But that isometric contraction can be really, really powerful in helping us get more progress, more performance down the road, preventing those injuries. And if you don't have a lot of weight, it also makes things really, really hard. So our third and final type of contraction, we've talked about eccentric contractions, right? Lengthening of the muscle, right? We're lowering our body down to the ground. That's where we get our soreness. We talked about isometric contractions where we have that transition between between the eccentric to the concentric, right? Really important. Probably where a lot of injuries in the gym happen, right? Think about it, someone's squatting, eccentric to concentric, and we lose that control and that stability. So those isometrics really important. And then concentric, this is that force production so many of us think about. If I'm dropping down, and we'll use the push up as an example, isometric at the top, slow controlled eccentric, if I have a little pause, there's that isometric, and then pushing away from the earth. That's that concentric contraction, right? That is where we actually have shortening of the muscle. If we're talking about push-ups, that means I have shortening of my pecs, I have shortening maybe a little bit anterior deltoid and triceps, and that's gonna push me away from the earth. So you can think about it, it's pretty easy with body weight exercises, generally as I'm pushing myself away from the earth, that's when I'm having more of my concentric contraction. But don't get confused there, because as we jump into other things like cable exercises, right? let's say I'm doing a single arm cable row, well I no longer have the earth as a reference point, so you really gotta start to think about what's happening with those muscles specifically, and that's when we really start to think about, okay, what muscles are shortening, right? As I pull that cable in, I've got that concentric contraction, shortening of my biceps, my lats, I have that isometric where I'm holding and squeezing that position, right? Locking my pelvis into place. So many good things happening during those isometric contractions. And then the eccentric where I have muscle lengthening of those exact same muscles, right? So I know it can be a lot, but even if you just start to put a little bit more emphasis in the gym with your own workouts on those three different types of muscle contractions, first off, it's gonna transform your workout, the way things feel, what you're focused on, the muscles that are engaged. And if you are working with clients, it's definitely gonna make sure that you're setting a stronger foundation by focusing on these different pieces of every exercise.